The psalmist in Psalm 100 says, come into God's presence with singing. For many weeks, we've been coming into God's presence in our own homes. But soon, in a few weeks, we'll be coming together right here. But that doesn't mean that we'll stop recording. And so for those who are still not quite ready to join us, we'll be coming to you through various avenues of social media. In the meantime, in the call to worship. We have gathered in God's holy presence, the one who etches grace on our hearts. This is the place where God will transform us into disciples. We glorify our God who yearns for justice, not just for the favored few, but for the least of our world. This is the place where God will write compassion on our souls. And we give thanks to God for unceasing grace. We remember God's persistence in saving us. This is the place where God will breathe the word into our lives. For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the wonder of each hour, of the day and of the night, hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our grateful hymn of praise. For the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the church that evermore lifteth holy hands above, offering on every shore her pure sacrifice of love. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For thyself, best gift divine, to our race so freely given, for that great, great love of thine, peace on earth and joy in heaven. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. Let's join our voices together in our prayer of confession. Like children, Lord, we fear that if we tell you what we have done, O God of justice, you might not love us anymore. We can kill the dreams of those around us with a word, spoken or withheld. We can make the lives of our friends miserable instead of sharing a miracle. We are filled with temptations which can only leave us empty and wanting more. Forgive us, gracious Father. Remind us that we are no longer sinners but your children. Baptized, we are clothed in the graciousness and faithfulness of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, 
who came that we might be set free of all that imprisons us. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And beloved, hear God's good news taken from Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 8. In overflowing wrath for a moment, I hid my face from you. But with everlasting love, I have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. And in response to that great love, we live lives of gratefulness. According to Micah 6, verse 8, What has God told us, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? Amen. All I once held dear, built my life upon, all this world reveres and wars to own. All I once thought gain, I have counted loss, spent and worthless now compared to this. Knowing you, Jesus, knowing you, there is no greater thing. You're my all, you're the best. You're my joy and righteousness. And I love you, Lord. All my heart's desire is to know you more, to be found in you and known as yours to possess by faith what I could not earn, all surpassing gift of righteousness. Knowing you, Jesus, knowing you, there is no greater thing. You're my holy, you're the best, you're my joy and righteousness, and I love you, Lord. Oh, to know the power of your risen life, and to know you in your sufferings, to become like you in your death, my Lord, so with you to live and never die knowing you Jesus knowing you there is no greater thing you're my all you're the best you're my joy and righteousness and I love you Lord Today we continue to move through the book of Acts to chapter 6, beginning to read at verse 1 through 7. Acts chapter 6. Listen for the word of God. Now during those days when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. The twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, It's not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait at tables. Therefore, friends, select from among yourselves seven good men of good standing, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task. 
while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the word. What they said pleased the whole community, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenius, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. They had these men stand before the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to spread. The number of the disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Some weeks, part of my preparation is to look back through my digital files to see what did I say about that particular scripture passage at that point in time. I don't think this is a trip down memory lane or a victory lap. On the contrary, to read old sermons is both painful and humbling. So I was quite surprised this past week and curious that in my digital search of Acts chapter 6, I found nothing. Now, I don't have all the sermons that I have preached for the last 25 years, but I have most. I couldn't find a sermon that I'd ever preached on Acts chapter 6. Got me wondering, do I have the same attitude as the apostles? I don't have time to deal with waiting on tables? Is this passage not important enough to me? And yet, I find this passage really interesting. I love this passage. But clearly, it's never found its way into a sermon. Maybe it's because waiting on tables is hard work. For anyone who has worked in the restaurant industry, and especially waiters and waitresses, you know. You know how difficult it is to wait on tables. And right now, with outdoor seating, We've heard from already some waitresses, there's more walking involved, there's more things to do. They're exhausted. Make sure you tip them a little extra. As a young teenager of 14, I worked as a busboy at a kind of a sit-down, eh, nice restaurant in Denver, Colorado. I'd come home smelling like the salad bar every night. Lord knows what food had been grounded in to the, the shirt and the pants. And my shoes, when I was done, yeah, they, they were tossed. You're always on your feet, responding to the needs and the wants of the customer, trying to provide the best service possible. Uh, all for just a very little bit of money. Well, this morning we find customers in Acts chapter 6. The Hellenists, widows. They have a problem, and they're going straight to the manager. Those tables with the Hebrew widows, they're getting served. But those tables with the Hellenists, they're not. And what are we going to do about it? Here we have two groups of Jewish Christians and one is complaining to the other that some in their ethnic cultural group are being left out. Now we do not find any reason why some widows have been overlooked in this daily distribution of food. What we also do not find here is blame. There are no fingers being pointed. 
No one is casting accusations at another. Instead, what they do is they simply identify the problem. There's some who are not receiving food. I think we can all agree that's a problem. People don't have enough nutritional food to meet their needs. So let's do something about it. But instead of trying to solve the problem within their present structure of 12 apostles, or dismissing the problem as unimportant, they honor the complaint. And they do more than just honor the complaint. They make their problem their problem. The apostles call together the entire Christian community and they make it our problem. And the community selects seven men to carry out the task of serving all the widows. Making sure that no one is overlooked. You know what we find here in this story about widows, food distribution, and the Christian community is their ability to respond as the entire community and to do so with creative solutions. The community would not allow their past to dictate their future. No one said, we've never done it this way. Peter. Now, they were able to keep the main thing the main thing and remain faithful to the mission of God. They were not beholden to the way things were, but instead open to discerning new ways, new movements of the Holy Spirit of expressing their obedience to God and their commitment to one another. They were committed to the way things ought to be as defined by God. And the result? Good news. The customers are happy. The widows were taken care of. The word of God continued to be proclaimed. And that was just the beginning. The word of God spread. The numbers continued to grow because they never lost sight of God's vision for humanity and for creation. And whatever the situation required, they were able to make the necessary changes because they thought outside the box. They found a God-honoring solution. And they put it into action. I think most would agree today that the present reality that we are living is not God's vision for the world. Racism, sexism, violence towards another person, Violence towards creation, poverty, hunger, victims of greed. And on top of all of that, we're going to talk a little bit more later. This being Refugee Sunday. There are 79 million people in the world that have been displaced from their homes. Some of the highest numbers this world has ever seen. These are people, God's children, living in our community and around the world who suffer day in and day out. People who have been left out, overlooked 
for a variety of reasons. I hope you've been listening and watching the last couple of weeks to those who have been left out because of the color of their skin. It has deeply troubled me. And it should trouble all of us. They've been left out because they're black. And when the apostles learned of the needs of a few, it became a concern for the entire Christian community. And they, as an entire community, responded. By keeping their eyes focused on God's vision for all of God's children, they acted. Well, today we are that Christian community. And we have learned of a problem. There have been some who have been overlooked. And it's a problem that demands a solution. And if we are living faithfully to God's mission and God's values, we will find an answer. That's the story of Acts. Because it is the Acts of the Holy Spirit who intrudes in our life and disrupts our lives in order to further God's reign on earth as it is in heaven. And when the community learned of a problem, they did something about it. Because they valued all of life. Because they were committed to God's mission. They took action. They created a whole new ministry. Because Hellenist widows' lives mattered. Amen. Let us pray. God of the refugee of wanderers and of exiles, the mother and the father of the homeless. You weep with those who are uprooted from their homeland, and you suffer with those who exist without shelter and security. Grant that your faithful love may reach out and that your healing mercy rise like the dawn on all who are oppressed. This day, Lord, we thank you for the blessing of fathers, Bless all those who take on the role of Father in our lives and in this world. By their care, their protection, their loyalty, their hard work, we have been blessed. And for those who could not fulfill that role in our lives, we ask for grace. Your grace alone that can heal all that is broken in our relationships. You who give life and give it abundantly, you, the Son of our Heavenly Father, be with all our fathers this day and grant them your grace and your healing so they might live out their role as fathers with dignity, strength, and peace. And Lord, as we hear of increasing COVID numbers in other states and as we continue to deal with illness and separation and fear, as we return to more open businesses and increase our social gatherings, we ask for your peace and your protection. For all that we have shared on our prayer list, Lord, and for all our prayers that remain unspoken or unshared, Lord, we lift them to you, the great physician, and we thank you for your presence with them. We ask for your healing and for your wholeness. For this world, Lord, we ask that you pour your peace upon us. End the struggles for power, end the violence and oppression of others, and let justice and mercy rain down on your creation. 
for your love that has no limits, we are amazed and humbled and grateful. Hear now the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus tells a parable about a father who longs for his son's return. When he sees him, the father breaks the social customs as he runs to greet his son. And before the son can say anything, his father has thrown his arms around him and has welcomed him home. We meet another father who sought healing for his son. Jesus healed him. Another father, a leader in the synagogue, came to Jesus, risking his position in hopes he would come and heal his deathly ill daughter. Jesus did, and she was healed. Or a centurion soldier, also risking his reputation, his position, who sends for Jesus that he might come and heal his servant. I highlight these men because it's Father's Day. Men who turned to Jesus. But in Scripture, it's not just men who turn to Jesus. There are men and women and children who sought Jesus on behalf of themselves and sometimes others. One was willing to do whatever it took to be together with his lost child. Another risked his reputation by seeking Jesus because he wanted his child, the young, the vulnerable, the weak, to be healed, to find life Again. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Finding life. Today, it's Refugee Sunday. 1% of the global population today has been forced to flee from their homes as a result of war, conflict, and persecution seeking safety either in their own country or abroad. That's more than 79 million people in the world. And of the 79 million, 30 million have been forced out of their own country. They are refugees. Since 2014, Pons Reformed Church has been resettling refugees and helping immigrants be successful in their new country. We've worked with over 40 different immigrants, some for a week, others for a year. Now, we don't have all their photos. We don't know all of their stories. But to see their face is to know they were forced from their home by forces beyond their control. And like the father waiting for his child, we run with open arms to welcome them to their new home. And as God seeks to give us new life through Christ, so do we seek to help others experience new life. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. 
you shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I will give you If you pass the raging waters in the sea, you shall not drown. If you walk amid the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before the power of hell and death is at your side, know that I am with you through it all. I go before you always, come follow me, and I will give you rest. Blessed are the poor, for the kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are you that weep and mourn, for one day you shall laugh. And if wicked tongues insult and hate you, all because of me, blessed, blessed are you. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me. And I On this day that we celebrate uh, men who have been instrumental in our lives, people who have loved us, we remember those who have come before and those who surround us now. And we remember our own calling to be that presence for others, that Embrace that love that others are seeking, whoever they may be, wherever they may come from. Let us go and serve the Lord. The love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to stay up to date with Ponds Reformed Church.